As a buyer representative, you're bringing your buyer in to see that house. They read it in the listing that said new windows. You're going around. They go, Adrian, Adrian, come here for a second. This window is not new. What's up? What's up? What's up? Episode 111. Welcome, everybody. This is KT Confidential. Welcome to the show. I'm Adrian, and this is my partner, my neighbor, my friend, Ariel Cormendi. Hello. Good morning. How are you hey, today? Great. Fantastic. Episode I'm so excited this time. 111 of, of KT Confidential, the real estate podcast. And it is. Today we have a topic that's been in the news, a topic that's been in our minds, a topic that I think a lot of consumers discuss. And we've been talking about it for years, really, in terms of how this and is the topic always, is the topic is square footage. <laughs> I can how can I convey that a little bit nicer? I uh, can't. There, there, there really is no way. Like, yeah, s- square footage. What is the square footage of the damn house? So let's just uh, summarize the article that came out today that kind of piqued your interest in talking about it. Which Before was, that, okay, I'm going to throw out the question to everybody that's watching and listening. Yes. How many times, and this is agents and consumers, buyers, sellers, realtors, whoever, the whole public, how many times have you seen a listing for a property, for a home, whether it's in Ontario or British Columbia or even in the United States, and you can't figure out how many square feet the home is. Right. And Nowhere to be found. Based on our conversation yesterday, it's going to be even more challenging to determine. Yeah. So we've got a few topics that we can talk about, subtopics yeah. within this topic. But the, the whole premise of this conversation is to talk about square footage. Uh, we can talk about how we arrive at the square footage of a property or how we possibly used to. Um, and how we do it as a team. Uh, But yes, go ahead. We were going to talk about an article that I forwarded to you this morning. Yeah, the article that came out today was discussing a case where a buyer uh, who in this particular situation, and it's relevant to the outcome of the case, was a first-time home buyer who bought a house in Stouffville. And they purchased this home under the premise that it was a 2100 square foot home. So the seller's agent told them it was a 2100 square foot home. It was listed as 2000 to 2499 square feet. So you get that range. Um, and I believe from what I read, even the buyer and seller at some point crossed paths during the process and the seller themselves conveyed that it was approximately or over 2000 square feet. So, well, because if you, if you go on to dig into the story, the agent that was selling it now used some of the information from the previous listing when the current owners purchased the property, which was how old? 12 years. So it was a list a, a a real estate agent that was listing a house now now used a source a data source from ten years ago that was it's a very unreliable source to start let alone you know how old it is they don't even know who the agent was or have any probably probably had no real uh, evidence that it was an accurate source to use and they use that in advertising the new listing. So anyway, so the buyer purchased under the premise they were getting a 2,000 or 2,100 square foot home. Um, it sounds like it was a relatively quick closing, but close to closing, uh, they had an appraisal done for the purposes purposes of getting the mortgage. The appraisal results showed that it was 1,450 square feet or somewhere in that range. That's a huge, huge discrepancy. So the buyer um, said, well, that's not what I bought. And they took it to court. They won the battle. They got their full deposit back plus $10,000. And the seller now, I assume, has to resell. I don't know. We don't know what happened beyond that. But depending on how close to closing that is, that's catastrophic. 
It could be detrimental. Like I'm sure the seller had a new house lined up. It's a yeah. big deal. So all because they didn't spend two, three, four hundred bucks to get a floor plan and proper measurements taken. Well, you, you see, here's the thing. Technically, like us as a team, we do hire a floor plan technician. That's what they're trained to do. And they provide us essentially the blueprint of our properties yes. and gives every room measurement, uh, ceiling height, um, uh, an actual floor plan that you can visualize, a 2D floor plan. And of course, we go up a little bit above and beyond and typically have 3D floor plans for, for our properties as well. But um, anybody looking at our listing can hop on and it's been verified, it's accurate, and it's publicly advertised in the listings um, and available to all of the realtors. So, so there's no misconception of how big the home actually is. It's been measured. But so we spend that money on having that floor plan technician go out and do that. But theoretically and realistically, a realtor, as we do on our teams, we have the laser measures. You could go room by room and measure it yourself, which is what you're supposed to do. That's why when you fill in the board forms as a realtor to, to upload your listing into a real estate board, it has the rooms and the room sizes. And you're actually supposed to verify and say, yes, this room is 10 by 9. And then do all the math and figure out the exterior walls, the interior walls, the hallways, the finished spaces, unfinished spaces, and say, okay, well, total living above grade uh, square footage is 1,450 square feet. That's what should be done. It's what you're hired to do. Yeah. Well, and a lot of a lot of real estate agents will use sometimes they use that source that we just discussed. So they'll look up an old listing and just run with that, which they have no idea where that number came from. Sometimes they'll get uh so for five dollars up until sometime in September, people could buy what was referred to through MPAC as a floor area report. And that would pro provide an estimate of the size of it. It was just basically um, from what I understand is a calculation of the um, outside exterior walls, walls using yeah. the exterior walls and then for two story duplicating it, which is not always accurate because the second floor does not always align with the main floor, but it was a more accurate a source. Very good representation. Yes. It was very often quite accurate and we would compare it to the ones that we paid for and they were usually pretty close. Um, the other source people use is a builder's original floor plan, which is no good either because the builder has disclosures everywhere when they're selling on spec like that, that they're estimations, right? These, this is a rough example of what they are going to build for you. But it's and not meant there have been many times. There have been many times where we compare a builder's floor plan and the actual floor plan actually comes in larger, significantly right. larger. We had one not that long ago that it was, I believe, 60 square feet larger. Mm. You're talking a 10 by six room. Yeah. Right? Like that. And, and if you talk about how much it costs to build a finished above grade space, you know, at $200 a square foot, uh, that's a lot of money. That's a lot of money, even $100 a square foot, right? That's, that's a lot of money. Yeah. So, um, but here's, here's, here's the thing. How are you as a realtor? And, and I'll, I'll forgive the buyers, even though I think like you got to be, I don't know. They're first time home buyers, so I'll give them a bit of credit. But well, as a, and that's one of the things that was taken into consideration. Of course. Yes. They've they they don't know any better, potentially. But as a realtor, even if it's your first deal ever, you're telling me you don't know the difference between fourteen hundred and fifty square feet and twenty one hundred square feet? There's right. Like Come on. There's like that's that's saying you don't know the difference between a size six or a size 12 shoe. 
Yeah, <laughs> precisely. Like we can walk. And what's funny because so this is the other thing that happened now is in September, MPAC stopped providing this floor area report. So you can no longer spend the five bucks to get this estimation of the total square footage. Instead, you can spend four dollars. So you save a buck and you get a range. So in this case, for that house we're talking about in Stouffville, it would have showed exactly what the range was disclosed online. So 2,000 to 2,499 square feet. Uh, anybody that's experienced as a real estate agent should be able to very quickly say, yeah, this house is somewhere in the range of 2,000 to 2,500 square feet. There's no mistaking a 1,500 square foot home and a 2,000 to 2,500 square foot home. doesn't matter whether it's floor plan. Like you can tell very quickly. Even just looking at a house from the outside, you can get a pretty good estimation of size. Yeah, that can be tricky, especially now there's a lot of larger single car garage. Like there, there are some properties in Halton region, semi-detached homes, which are almost 3,000 square feet with a single car garage. And I don't think you would be able to tell from the outside. But um, certainly when you walk in and walk around, and get to the stage of putting an offer on it. If you can't figure out the difference between fourteen fifty and twenty one hundred as a realtor, especially, there's something wrong. Oh yeah, absolutely. So, so and to the detriment of that sale, that just goes to convey how important it is to get it done properly. Now, I'll say a couple of things. Number one, people want to know the square footage. You know what's funny people, is I find people, agents are like afraid to disclose it. Uh, exactly. Exactly. We just sold a property about a week and a half ago, which is 1,616 square feet. I guarantee you, if you look at all of the comparable sales of that model, None of over them the last them. 90 days, zero. none of them will actually disclose the square footage because everybody's afraid that the house will appear to be too small online. Right. So you pull a wool blanket over everybody's head to come to the house. And if it actually is too small, you're wasting everybody's time. You're wasting the buyer's time, the agent's time, the seller's time, especially during uh, a pandemic. Yeah. Uh, why? Why are you hiding it? Why can't you just? Co- why isn't it mandatory? So where are I think all it, is, the- it is on one of the real estate boards, but not all of them. And now the problem no. is that they all feed into each other. For the most, well, part. this 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 has to be a a national level thing. So it has to be the Canadian Real Estate Association that gets together with the uh, MLS uh, systems and says, okay, let's all get together. Let's get all the governing bodies, everybody, everybody, all the boards, CREA, RIA, RICO, uh, even the big franchises, like you're Remax, about to break Century out 21. Tell me the square footage. Um, get everybody together. Make it mandatory. Make it mandatory right across the board. What happens is when you when you when you try to be sneaky and misleading into making people think that perhaps it's bigger than it is, they show up and they're they're let down. Right? Maybe they come in thinking, oh, maybe this is oh, it's fifteen hundred to two thousand. I mean, it looks big. Maybe it's maybe it's insert my online dating story here. No, I'm just kidding. Or uh, (laughs) or you know they put finished living space, which is you know as we've learned recently is even a bigger problem. But you know if you try to convey that it's bigger than it is, people come in with these high expectations that are let down. If you just tell them what it is and convey why it's so nice because of what it is, they come in and they might be blown away. So you take someone's expectations and you exceed them. Well, the other thing is, I mean, square footage is not everything because as we know, the floor plan and layout of a property is very important. And like this property I was referring to at 1616 square feet, um, which by the way, in the builder floor plan is 1600 even. Yes. So we found an extra 16 square feet where if you even give it $100 a square foot, we found some money there, right? Um, 
Remember that one time as well, people challenged us because we put the square footage, it differed from the original builder's plan. Yeah, and- it because it pushed us into that next bracket. Yeah. If you remember. Yeah. So uh, we had, I think, 1960 or something as the builder's square footage on their floor plan. Yeah. And ours came in at like 2005. Yeah. So it put us into that two thousand to five thousand dollar check mark on the boards, and uh, we got several calls from agents saying, "Oh, it's under two thousand square feet." Yeah. No, no, it's not. We had it measured. Thank you. Yeah. Professionally. Yeah. Well, um, people are just so accustomed, especially in a neighborhood or in a community where there's so many new construction home. Everyone's accustomed to using those floor plans from the builder. Well, and the thing is, like like you said, they're they're created as a as a rough blueprint of what the house probably is going to be. Yeah. But every site, you know, every lot, the grading of the lot, and and all of those variables can actually produce a different product. Um, to the point where I have seen on a number of occasions. Um, walls are shorter in some areas. Like if you have a, um, a fourth wall that's a opening, uh, has a door opening from floor to ceiling, um, sometimes that wall gets shifted or cut in half or whatever because of support and structural issues. Um, windows can be placed in different areas. Yeah, well, that's Landings, a big thing. There's a lot of land- people are using the builder's floor plan, even reputable big teams are just taking the builder's floor plan and dropping it into their brochure. But it could be like you're saying, it's not exact. It could be a mirrored image. It could be completely different. Yeah. So just laziness, pure laziness. So here's the thing. If you're going to list your property for sale, uh, it's, it's a really good idea to make sure that your property has been properly measured from top to bottom and that the proper square footage is identified because you and your realtor, but you or your realtor and your realtor's brokerage, um, but you could all be held liable. And that story that we gave you this morning is a good example of that. Well, and that particular real estate agent that was representing the seller admitted to negligence. Um, so that helped the buyer's case too. 100%. So. And to, well, to, but also to your point, I can't remember how many calls I've had to make or how much digging I've had to do to find what kind of square footage is it when I'm looking at the home online. Because even oftentimes, I don't see all of the room sizes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we see the 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 wrong uh unit of measurement used often so it'll be inputted in in one unit of measurement but actually um transferred into another and not appear on the boards correctly yeah um but as as a buyer representative if you're a realtor as a buyer representative you need to obtain as much information about that property as possible to properly educate your buyer. And as a seller, you want as many educated buyers interested in the property as possible. So, so it's, it's a cheap thing to do. Like, here's a tip for all of you realtors and sellers listening. There's a few things that you can do when listing your home that cost a very small amount of money in the big picture of the actual cost of the sale. Number one, good photos. Number two, get a proper floor plan created and have it measured. Number three, have your property cleaned professionally. You'd be surprised those, how often that does not happen. Those three things on a 2,000 square foot home will cost you less than 2,000 bucks. Photos, a good floor plan with full measurements and a good thorough cleaning. Less yeah. than 2,000 bucks. 
are you telling me, A, either your realtor can't afford or is too cheap uh, to pay for those things, or are you not going to want to spend that money to pay for those things? Somebody's got to spend the money and pay for those things. If everybody did that and everybody was held accountable to doing that, real estate would be so, so much better. Yeah. The listings will well, look and better. In this day and age, everything's about transparency, right? People have access to so much information. So when you don't provide it, it's frowned upon. It's the equivalent, and maybe because we were in the auto industry for, for many years, but everybody listening or watching has bought or sold or, or both uh, vehicles in their lifetime. So let's just take a home that doesn't have professional photos. And I mean, good photos. Okay. Not just some, some dude with a camera that says, Oh, I'm going to, I'm going to start a little side business and I'm going to start making, uh, realtors hire me to, uh, take photos of homes. No, do the research, go through courses, have the proper equipment, Take the proper time, the proper post edit, all of those things. It doesn't cost a lot of money. Two thousand square foot home. If you pay four or five hundred bucks, that's probably average. Um, good photos, floor plan, cleaning. If everybody did that, the world would be a better place. But you I'm know what? If you. everybody did that, there wouldn't it wouldn't I'm be as fun. You. That's why there's so much opportunity in this business, is because, and that's why I was excited to get into it, is because there, there, would, still, a, there would still be tons of opportunity. Oh, but I'm, how much, how much easier would it be if every home had those just those three things? They're not expensive, and it's not hard. You literally can Google real estate photographer Oakville, and two pages on Google will come up with. Pretty decent options. Yes. Pick one of them, research, whatever. Do the same thing for home cleaning. Do the same thing for custom floor plans or resale homes. Guaranteed in the first, if you need a referral, call me. I'll give you a referral. But first two pages of Google, you search those three things, less than 2,000 bucks, you get it all done. So yeah. that's my advice. That's my, that's my takeaway for you for, for this episode. So just to confirm too, so um, when you're the proper way to display, I don't know if you watched that video, but the proper way to display or to to measure for square footage in a freehold home where you're buying the whole property, you own the property, they measure from the exterior wall in because you're buying all of that, you own it. For condos, it's from the interior wall because you don't own the anything beyond that. Um, also, a lot of people, let's say this house, as an example, we uh, measured at 1,616 square feet, the one you were talking about. So that's the above grade measurement from the exterior walls in. Now, a lot of people, now that particular home had a finished basement. So a lot of people will now take the total square footage in the basement, which includes exterior walls also, and say total living space, X amount of money. Well, the problem with that is it's not total living space. So the total living space does not include the walls. It's the total living space by definition is anything inside of the walls. So you have to be very careful. There was a, a lawsuit in, I think it was in Oakville or Burlington. Um, a real estate agent listed it as total living space, X amount of money. The buyer later found out that that was not the case. And when they had their floor plan done, perhaps from an appraiser also, I don't know, um, that there's a big discrepancy. So something as simple as using one or two incorrect words makes them well, because it's a simple, super liable. It, it's a simple change in the remarks or the description of the property. Yes. You can put plus an additional whatever x amount of square footage of living space in the basement yeah you could word it that way for sure but as soon as you bundle it all together and say total living space now you're now you're I, incorrect i really don't like disclosing square footage of the basement personally yeah um you get into also value uh, not discrepancy, but 
value discussion. Like how much is above grade square footage worth in resale? And then how much is below grade finished space worth in resale? Well, then there's the variable of below grade is, is what is below grade? Below grade by definition is any, you know, anything below grade, but you get a lot that have a walkout basement or That's have true. really, really large windows. And some have tiny little wee little windows in the corner that you can hardly see out of. Well, a lot of townhomes, as an example, especially in Halton region and Peel region, the the home, like the basement, is pretty well all below grade, with the exception of 14 inches. Yeah. Whereas some of the newer homes, uh, especially um, if you're like in Milton, you have a lot of um, rolling properties uh, from, especially towards the escarpment. And sometimes the builder will keep it to get that extra um, drainage or um, to get a walkout property, things like that. So you could have a semi-detached home or a town home or a detached home for that matter and have half of the basement pretty well, quote unquote, at or above grade. Yeah. And then half of it totally below grade. Right. So, um, yeah, that, that, that is always something to, to keep in mind. But we know that basements, as an example, your cost to finish it is far from the cost that you get or the reimbursement you'll get or the return on that investment, if it is an investment, um, in, in resale. Well, we've actually had that discussion in recent podcasts where that number has changed a lot over the years. More so now, just any additional living space it gives you a relatively good return. Yeah, Whether but you don't need you need you don't need to disclose that square footage. No, no, you, I agree. I agree. I think I mean And for, for the most part, for the most part, the basement is going to be a similar square footage, less storage rooms as the main floor right for the most part yeah it gives you reasonable expectation yeah yeah it's pretty much an identical blueprint or f- floor uh, footprint so you know the big takeaways on on this are if you're selling you know and if you're a seller's realtor just just do the right thing get get a floor plan done um or measure it yourself. Like it's not that hard. It'll take you some time, but if you don't want to spend the money or you feel more comfortable doing it yourself or you want the quick turnaround. Well, we used to do that. Remember we had the iPad yes. and we had, I think it was magic plan. And, and there, even the new iPhone, especially the new one because of the, uh, the cameras, I can't remember it was called. It's like some light radar. Light, yeah. Well, LIDAR. Did, the, the, the new, the LIDAR. new can't, Anyways. The new iPhones even have a, um, a measure app built in. Yeah. A so laser measure. One way or another, especially as a buyer's agent, it's good to bring some form of measurement tool with you and can verify if the seller included a floor plan, verify the, you know, every few rooms, take a measurement and, and confirm the accuracy of it. Because the last thing you want, actually another thing in this um, um, seminar I was watching the guy was talking about friends of his that bought a condo and the living room was seven feet shorter than the floor plan. Like, I mean, that seems a bit outrageous unless it was like a 30 foot room. How do you miss seven feet of the condo? But you know, anyways, that's an extreme, but nevertheless, even if, you know, inches here and there makes a big difference. Well, we, we brag sometimes about the size of a room yeah right like i don't know i uh, i feel really bad for people that get duped because it happens all the time it affects potentially resale values well and here's the other thing now especially if you're in a market where it's very competitive and it's a seller's market you don't you know people are making very quick decisions so you need to slow down and do your due diligence 
um, don't rush the process. I mean, you're obviously going to be, uh, have a time constraint in these cases because they may be taking offers on a certain day. But if you see it once and you've got it, you know, you like it, maybe go back and just do a more thorough walkthrough, take some more measurements. If they didn't provide all the details you need, just, you know, be smart about your decision and, and be cautious of being pushed into making quick decisions without doing your due diligence. Well, and even without litigation, there's, there's an effect that the square footage can potentially have on your resale when you go to sell that property. So as an example, in this article, uh, the home was 1,450 square feet for in Stouffville, for that real estate board, there are, um, as you alluded to earlier, ranges of square footages that the realtor indicates, okay, it's X amount of square foot to X amount of square foot. Yes, and that one's a big difference. It is because it, that one ranges from, I believe, eleven ninety nine to fourteen ninety nine. So it drops through two full categories. Well, now let's just say the home was only fifteen hundred and fifty square feet. Okay, that still puts it into another category. Yeah. So when you go to resell the home you're no longer advertising it as 1500 to whatever that next bracket is 1799 uh, or 1999 you are now having to be in the lower tier and that can affect your resale value yeah. so you know what i've also seen i've seen listings where they go as far as listing this specific uh, square footage uh, so in this case, I think it was something like 19, high 1900s. 1987, but it's 2,000 to 2,500 square feet. Yeah. So they, they list the specific square footage and then categorize it in the next level above that. It's ridiculous. So, so like just for those so of you listening, the, the reason that people might do that is to make the home stand out in a different category to justify their price or to make the price look better. So as an example, if this 1987 square foot home market value is 900,000 bucks and in the next category, the homes start at 925 on average, but now you advertise your your property for 900 in that category, all of a sudden the, the thought process is, oh, I'm going to get more attraction because I'm offering a home at a lower price yeah. and I'll get multiple offers and whatever. Yeah. So you'd rather be the lowest price and the smallest home in that category versus being the highest price and the largest home in the other category. Correct. Which people aren't stupid. No. Like, Consumers today are more educated about every purchase on every single thing that we purchase in our, in our lives, from toilet paper to food. In many cases, more so than the person selling it to them. A hundred percent. I guarantee you I could pull a hundred people that have been on realtor.ca in the last 30 days, and they will probably know more or could they could probably go and write the ORIA courses. I knew more about my realtors. car when I bought my car than the guy that sold me the car. So what I was going to say earlier, and I, and I drifted because I never do that, is imagine if you were buying a car. And I, I talked about, you know, everybody's bought and sold cars before. Imagine if you walked into the store and they said, here's the... 2019 oh, Toyota yeah, Camry. Were, were, yeah, the right. Uh, no, this is here's the here's the 2019 Toyota Camry. Sorry, you know, it's early. I haven't had my second coffee yet. And I, I like chatting with you. I haven't chatted with you all week. We've been too busy. It's true. Um, here's the 2019 Toyota Camry, but it doesn't come with a safety. It doesn't come with an emissions test. We haven't checked. Um, we haven't checked the car over. We haven't replaced the oil. Uh, we haven't cleaned it, but please, 
please buy it for market value. Yeah. Or no, I got a better example. Or you have a certified vehicle that's been certified by the manufacturer and it has a safety and emissions test that's been detailed inside and out. They just changed the oil, they rotated the tires, the mechanic drove the car, and it has a full 110 point inspection list. It comes with a 30 day warranty and it's the same price or a little bit more. Which one are you going to buy? Well, think of it this way too, though. Like, let's in that industry, a good comparison would be you see a car advertised as having 90,000 kilometers, and then you buy it and pick it up, and it's got 102, <laughs> right? That threshold over 100K, over 100K, your, yeah. your car depreciates quite a bit. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. So, there's, there's actually a lot of, but but there's a lot of sense to that. Like how, how and why do people think that it's okay to sell that uncertified, unsafetyed, unclean, inaccurate home for $900,000 on average? The average price of a home in Alton region is just below a million bucks now. Yeah. So I don't know. Well, I don't un, know un, if, you know. If, unclean and you know not particularly you know unfit whatever that stuff's fine that's fine the problem is misrepresent is it yes yeah you, sure if somebody wants to just sell their house they don't want to clean it that's their decision but misrepresent misrepresenting something yeah i'm going on a bit of a tangent because it all bundles in together yes you're right misrepresentation well same can be said with the age of certain mechanicals or chattels and fixtures included yeah um you know why well, people often we people sold... often don't know the age of my furnace i don't fucking know the age of my furnace right like yeah. well we 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 sold a house on uh, in mississauga on pilcom recently and i was actively watching the comps and there was one on the street of a few streets over i went to look at because it was a direct comparable and they had in the listing li specified new windows per owner so i went into this house there was one new window. They had the original 30 year old windows through most of the house. They had the wow. original sliding door at the back. There was like one new window at the front on the main floor. And it wasn't even new. It was like probably four years old. But Talk about opening yourself up to potential uh, litigation. 100%. And what kind of a schmuck does that? I know. And well, then the challenge is then, then, you know, as a buyer, as a buyer representative, you're bringing your buyer in to see that house. They read it in the listing that said new windows. You're going right. around. They go, oh. Adrian, Adrian, come here for a second. Yeah. This window is not new. Well, I, so I went over and I took pictures of every window and the back door. So when agents called me to submit an offer, they would, everybody was obviously comparing it to that one. So I would send them pictures and I said, so this yeah, because that, fucking home, new that, window? that home was sold. That home was sold. So that now home. they're looking back at the comparable sold listings and I mean, saying, oh, this one had new windows. Yeah, so they were like, why are you it priced had new windows? You weren't even in the property. Right, exactly. So I, I would send them the pictures and say, listen, this is why we're more money. That did not have new windows. It was filthy, dirty. It stunk like cat piss. And please watch the previous two episodes to and for the record, get further information on cat piss. For the record... You know, Ariel, I don't know, maybe you can clear the air here, but somebody was offended that they thought maybe their house smelled like cats. So I just want to say, I don't think every house smells like cats if they have cats. <laughs> okay, so Natalie, when we started dating, she had a cat. Yes. Beautiful cat, Cookie, a Himalayan. Fucking thing shed everywhere. And yeah, for sure that would. My, I swear, I loved that cat. Beautiful cat. Uh, my dad ended up adopting her, and she uh, she unfortunately passed away uh, last year. But rest in peace. Okay. Yeah, uh, you know she had her moments, but she cats are very clean. It's they not are. the cats, really. I mean, they can smell, but it's the owner's responsibility to make sure that they don't smell. Like the the litter box has to be clean. The cat isn't doing it itself. Yeah. Um, okay, so if I offended anybody, Stop sorry, <laughs> sorry, I really don't care. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, if you've made it this far, make sure you subscribe and drop a comment. 
Leave us. Uh, let us know what you want us to talk about. Hey, you know, one thing. We want to know what you're curious about. We're fans of Gary V, although, you know, he's starting to grow old on me a little bit. But because um, I've been following and listening to him for so long and he speaks his mind. The one thing I love about the guy is he speaks his mind. He, he curses. He says what he's thinking. If you ask him a question, he tells you the truth, whether it's online or in person. And he doesn't give a fuck. And in our industry, everybody sees us as having to be, quote unquote, professional. Right. And, you know, don't don't swear or don't wear a hoodie on a showing or how can you wear sneakers or, you know, uh, I show up in shorts and a T-shirt uh, to a, a showing or a home inspection or an offer presentation. And somebody might look at me and say, why aren't you in a, in a suit? And how can you swear on your podcast? Or how can you call cats smelly on your podcast? <laughs> or how can you call realtors idiots on your podcast? Well, we write the occasional ethics exam. <laughs> Yeah, we've gotten in trouble remember, for it before. I've had, but you know uh, what? Yeah. I wish people would speak their minds 100%. and just be, uh, you know, I'm not trying to be Don Cherry of, of real estate because you, you do have boundaries. But why why do you have to dance around the subject and talk about it behind people's backs or behind closed doors? In today's day and age, in our market, in our demographic, the people that I want to do business with, they like the fact that I said cats stink. Yeah. There's episode 111 for you. We'll see you next week. Ciao.